recording in three, two, one. Summer Sage TFE. Yo, one Pat Ronimo. How are you, man? I am okay, thank you. It's awesome to have you. Um, so, Sam, you are developer, coder, YouTuber. Yeah. Let's start. Developer and coder being the same thing, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should we start with YouTuber? Sure. How did you get into it? When did you start making videos? Um, well, my first video was actually um, summer 2015. It is currently unlisted right now, but it was just like an intro video. Um, so I started off, and I I have a lot of unlisted videos. I'd say nearly half of my videos are actually unlisted because um, they were, for a very long time ago, pretty cringy. Um, but I started off doing Minecraft. I sort of started making Minecraft servers at the early age of probably... 10, in fact, I'd say that long ago, um, and I made like tutorials for how to set up command blocks and things like that back then. Um, and then, yeah, I did Minecraft for another three years or so, and then I just switched on to um, anything really, general aviation, Roblox, and now, obviously, I am PTFS and IRL aviation sort of thing that I cover. Uh, so quite a big change. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm really enjoying the uh, the current content that's being produced. Yeah, well, it's getting a lot of views now. It's really blown up in the last few. I'd say this year, probably. Yeah, so it's definitely. It was uh, due to lockdown and the time that we could spend making um, updates to PTFS. I think def by far the most popular videos, even though they're certainly not the highest effort of videos, are the videos where I showcase what I or Orange have been working on. In PTFS. Fair enough. And okay, go, let's go back to like your Minecraft. It's like, did you, you used to when you said make servers, kind of yeah. Talk to us about that. Like, oh yeah. So, I um. So I was quite. I was involved in a lot of Minecraft stuff. I I made like um. Well, I, I wasn't really into playing much, but I made like um, like a PV, PvP servers. They. I mean, when I say servers, they they only usually had like ten people on at once. It was a very sort of small community and I actually used to live stream on the family shared computer and it was very awkward because people would be <laughs> walking in and, and things like that and uh, so I did start off streaming everything pretty young just as I started uh, secondary school actually um, but yeah and uh, I, um, I there's actually a server called Fakeplex which was a recreation of the server called Mindplex um, and I was an admin on that and that was very big and it was a uh, there's a YouTuber called Skeppy, he's pretty big at the moment. Um, but because I was an admin on there, I actually got to go in the call with him and stuff. I uh, actually have a video on that. It doesn't really show it for that long. Um, but I did get up to a lot of cool stuff. And I remember getting really excited when my streams had an average of 40 viewers or so, uh, being at like 300 subs. And that was pretty amazing because normally you need a lot more subs to get that many consistent views on your streams. Um, but yeah, I was briefly stuff on the real server called Mindplex on the um, the Bedrock Edition, um, and I was demoted for inactivity, <laughs> and because I still had been on the fake server. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, uh, it was a very fun part, and um, yeah, I mean, I was yeah definitely streaming was was a big thing I did. Um, yeah, very cringy, so obviously all unlisted now. But, yeah. Fair enough. So, the, how did you start to transition into Roblox and especially coding? Like, did you do any coding before Roblox or? Um, yeah. So coding, I remember. I remember doing Scratch um, in when I was in year six. So that was primary school. Um, I remember starting doing Scratch. Then I remember in um, ICT. It was cool. Um, I remember being really excited when the teacher said, we're going to be doing Scratch, because I'd already done some at home. Um, and then I think the next year I started some basic Python. Um, I remember like learning how to import like date time libraries, things like that and everything. Um, then I didn't really do much coding until a couple of years later when I did this um, coding club, which I won't name because it would be obvious where I live if I do. Um, but uh, yeah, so... It, it it was um, there were mentors and they'd help you with uh, anything you needed really. There was a very wide range of languages. I went there. Um, I met a really good friend there, um, who if it wasn't for that club, I wouldn't actually be in contact with. And he's 
one of my uh, best friends, um, and he was doing HTML at the time, I think. Um, so I did Python mainly. I did do some, I think I tried to do some Java. Uh, I wasn't the best at it. I can do it now, although not very well. I, I rarely ever do it. Um, so I did that. Um, so yeah, there was that. And then I think I just basically, when I started Roblox, it was actually probably, even though my first Roblox account was made in 2012, which is now my alt, um, I really started in 2017, I'd say, jailbreak and things like that. And uh, I think I tried making my own game then. I watched tutorials, but Roblox Studio was just too confusing for me. So I gave up. And then like a year later, I tried again, and I actually made a... I can probably find a date when it was created. Um, it's a very bad game where you pick up these little gold coins, and the more you picked up, the you'd grow in size. Do you have it? Can we play um, it? <laughs> yeah, if you want, we can try. Can we try and uh, find okay. it? That'd be cool. Um, so basically, um, I know, I'll join it, and you can join off my profile. Okay. Uh, let's see. Created by me. Um, so basically, yeah, you picked up these things, but the problem is, is that so as you grew in size, it also made it very difficult for you to actually hit any other players with your sword. So it was actually better to not progress through the game <laughs> if you wanted to kill people. Um, where is it? I'll get it up. And um, oh yeah, and so I also became a group helper on PTFS, um, which was oh, it's a group creation. That's why I think I can't quite. I, I really can't remember actually. It was quite a long time ago, I think. Uh, but then I became a moderator, and uh, I actually helped with some very basic stuff. I think one of the first things I helped with was when Air Force One was introduced. Um, you, though, it, because it was technically a livery of a 747, there was no way to have a specific livery as a game pass. It was only with the entire aircraft as a game pass. So I had a look at this sort of basic Lewis scripts. It was very well written by uh, Cody QWERTY on handling, you know, aircraft spawning and stuff. And I did like a condition where it, like, if it's the Air Force One, then specific livery and everything like that. Um, and then just more stuff. I think it was more tweaking, I think. And uh, that sort of proved that I could actually do basic sort of scripting. Um, and then, yeah, from there, just more and more. Um, yeah, early lockdown was definitely when we did by far the most scripting. Um, yeah, this is the game. <laughs> so basically, you get a, this was everything in this game is apart from the sword. I believe is one hundred percent by me at the time. Um, it's not very impressive. Uh, so basically, you touch a portal, and then it turns into like a portal like this, and you go through and you collect these coins, and when you collect them. Uh, you sort of grow in size. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, yeah, and, and then if you go through to your portal by where you spawn, you can go into like a big arena where you can battle. Um, but yeah, the thing is, with if you're a big size, you can't really hit the other players, so it's best that you don't. And also, <laughs> the script is a bit glitchy, it makes you like wobble along the floor as you die. But yeah, this is the first game I made. Um, and yeah, I haven't touched it for ages um, but yeah and I think I, I might have actually made some commands and stuff I, I experimented with chat this game has a lot of potential I can tell that it's a really uh, cool idea obviously oh, you need some <laughs> yeah, you bug need fixing <laughs> yeah you need I some revisions I um, can't remember I think I made some sort of game pass it was 21 robux oh so it's slash mega oof when you do that in chat it, it makes you do this. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, it, it, it could show... I mean, obviously, without me, PTFS would still be a very big and popular game. It's not like I was there from the start. So, like, I'm not to credit for PTFS's success or anything. So I can't... So it's not like I can say, this is what I was back in the day, but now I'm at this level in PTFS, because most of it was, all the original stuff was done by Coda QWERTY and Orange, um, you know, so without me it would like literally still be a really popular game and everything, it's just the newer stuff that I'm, I'm to credit for. So I can't really say, like, I've gone from this to PTFS, because PTFS was already there 
way before me. Um, but it does, but certainly some of the newer features in PTFS are far better than something like this sort of thing. Yeah, so what are you to credit for in PTFS? You're being um, very humble and saying I'm what I'm not, <laughs> what you're not to credit for, but you're not saying what you are to credit for. So, it's kind of like, because it, it, it's, it's kind of awkward because it's like you can't really, I, I don't have a list, well I think I did have a list. Um, but the problem is that's very outdated when I made it at the time, but I can probably try and find the list. And and after I read that out, I'll probably remember some other stuff. Oh yeah, so oh, anyway, back to where I was. Um, if I go to my list, so obviously it was all, it must have been anything that was added before, like 2019, is 100% nothing to do with me, sort of thing. Um, because I think it was 2019 when I might have started helping. So some of this stuff uh, I made on the 20th of April, I made like a note of some significant stuff, and that was Afterburners, Contrails, which are now removed, um, Sonic Boom, Cool Signs, the mod panel, um, the mini-map, but Coda Quality helped me with that, um, the chunk loading system that reduces lag by moving stuff into replicated storage when you're not near it, um, first-person view, um, binoculars, stair lift and jetway adjustments, um, the GPWS callouts, uh, the minutes flown thing, the rank picker, tyre smoke, uh, the lift system, and then some other stuff I just remember from my own, like, heads, um, obviously winds, because that's a relatively new thing. Um, there is, yeah, the, the wind customization panel, the day night thing. Um, but yeah, I think I, there's probably some other things. Um. Well, yeah, because these are not small things. Like if you know, tech groups, <laughs> many many yeah. Roviation tech groups have way less, you know, features and kits than yeah. these. Like these are not small things. <laughs> yeah, I think the the one thing that I suppose with tech groups there is, I mean, although if they're a tech group, they should like arguably should have like pretty <laughs> insane features for people to actually buy them or something. Um, but it's probably because PTFS is, is a single game and it's not like the jets would just work if you were to insert yeah. them into another game. They've got a lot of stuff that relies on the actual game. Uh, that being said, like I do have like a very minimalist local copy where I can like test the jets with hardly any of the stuff that PTFS actually has. So, for example, my land gear won't work, but I can test the plane kit and, you know, that's when I add like a base plate effectively and I just use that. Uh, to test the wind. Uh, it helps also because PTFS, obviously, if you're running it on Studio, there's a, a fair bit of lag. Um, studio certainly isn't the most optimised thing in the world. Like, the memory usage is very high. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. That's really cool. Have you been involved in any other groups, then? Is it not is it um, just PTFS? Well, yeah, there's a game called um, Airports Haiku. Um, and that I did the... Should we play that? Sounds. Should we quickly go play that? Oh yeah, we can go on that. That's um, I think that that used to be like one of the biggest um, games, most played games on Roblox for a fair amount of time because it wait it blew up. I think it still has a very high player count. So, um, yeah, I, they're really nice, um, really nice devs there. I just um helped them in the sort of slightly earlier days. It was still I think it was still pretty popular. Um, but I just added like animated propellers sound. Um, I think I added some other things, like making it so the cargo plane could carry the um, the ground vehicles. Um, and I can't remember exactly what else. But yeah, just general things. And they've actually helped me a bit. Because um, they have a really cool helicopter kit. Um, and I asked them what it was. And they you know, provided me with a link and stuff. And I might be able to use that for future for maybe you know, improving helicopter controls and things like that. Uh, I haven't started on that yet. Um, but it could certainly be a thing in the future. Yeah, so this this is um this this game has had a lot of updates. They've I think they've added, you know, stealth aircraft, they've added um well they did the Blackbird since I last played it. Um they've got the A ten. It's really cool actually. So yeah, sorry, which feature did you say you'd worked on? I don't know if you can show me. So firstly if you get in a plane, um You'll notice that the obviously the engines or the propellers rotate. Um, 
I just did some basic Motor 60 stuff with that. Um, also the engine sound that adjusts with the throttle. Um, it's got a similar system where if you hover your mouse over the aircraft you can just press E to yeah, get in. So, Did you do that uh, as well? Yes. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't actually know that was here until uh, right now, actually. But that is, yeah, that's a cool feature. Makes it a fair bit easier to get in. Yeah. Did you um, code that on PTFS? Was that there before you? Oh, uh, no, that was actually coded QWERTY. Um, I actually didn't know and pretty much until everyone knew that it was there uh, on PTFS. Fair enough. Are there any other games you've um, worked on as well? Or just groups in general? I don't... Not... not uh, I, well, I obviously I think I've helped a tiny bit with Callum's Formula um, E thing, uh, but not enough to really claim I have helped significantly, sort of thing. Uh, so I think these two are definitely the the Peter obviously Peter Fest. Um, this one um, is like quite minor things. Um, so yeah, I mean I, I I'm not actually like a developer. Um, on this, I, I'm a con if I type in chat. It says contributor, uh, I, which is definitely fair enough because I, I, I like if you compare to what I've done here to you know the other devs, like they've made the game, I've made propellers spin, sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. It's still very cool, very cool contributions. Mm -hmm. well, your skills are very unique. <laughs> um, adding things, um, really unique features to already. Yeah, because the games are, you know, majority of it's there, just maybe not quite as fleshed out, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, you said you've um, worked with the VRA as well, because I've worked with you in them as well. What have you added, like, with those jets? Um, I'll have a, I'll have a, I don't think I boosted everything I added, but I'll have a look at the development channel. Um, so obviously, you know, animated control surfaces. Um, was that uh, so? Uh, added like the flaps flaring thing, uh, but that wasn't the best thing in the world. I think that had to be tweaked later. Um, rudders, so you know, A and D to your. Um, I definitely added some other stuff, but I don't think I posted it in the development channel because I remember I spent like a good day uh, tweaking things. Uh, but I can't even remember exactly what it was, um, so unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> it's not the most interesting information I have. But that's fair enough. Um, yeah, not obviously not that. Well, you've, yeah, you've really been much. you've really been busy all throughout Reviation. It's quite yeah, a res quite I a think, resume. I think yeah, it's definitely it is surprising that planes like it's definitely an entire skill set to have. Like I might be pretty useless in other stuff. Um, it's probably also because I enjoy. I'm happy to research how to do things, um, which is why I'm able to add all these features. Uh, yeah. Like, oh yeah, and also I suppose my Vulcan um, that I use well rarely use for displays, but sometimes do. That uh, I, I'm not really an animator, although I did animate all of the control surfaces and gears and everything like that. And the reason I could is just because I should just spent such a long time on it. You know, there's probably far more efficient ways to do it than I did. Than by manually adjusting every like half a stud and seeing if it works and starting over again. Um, but yeah, as long as you spend like long enough doing it, you will eventually get there, sort of thing. Yeah, I imagine. And yeah, the Vulcan display team. How did that get started? What made um, you decide to start a yeah to start just well, think, building a Vulcan? I think Charlie um, imported a Vulcan into Studio because at that time, I even though it's very simple, I actually didn't know how to import stuff from Blender into um, Studio. So we imported a Vulcan, um, and I decided that we should, you know, uh, work together and um, sort of get a team going. And so in the early stages, you know, all of the building stuff, all of the sort of part stuff he did, and I did the scripting. And then later on, I think I mainly did most of it myself, but he, without him, it probably wouldn't be here. Um, but yeah, obviously I animated it and everything, added really cool sounds. Um, added brakes and things like that. Um, it's pure. It's definitely a display aircraft. It's not the sort of aircraft that is, you do need training in order to be able to fly because it's got very unique systems, um, and it's not the most realistic to fly. But if you fly it correctly, it can look realistic, sort of thing. That's really cool. So, what unique features does it have? Um, also, it's got it's got a very sort of basic, you know, altitude holds. Um, 
but it's got it's it's got ground break and air break. Um, it's got flaring, so you can get the high um, nose attitude for landing. Um, and it's got nose wheel steering, and which disconnects uh, once your rudder becomes active, because obviously you know once you're airborne. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I can't remember if it disconnect. I I can't remember if that I fully fixed that in the end, but I think in the early days it would actually still turn even when you were in the air, which kind of looks a bit weird. Because uh, in real life, the nose wheel steering operated on a Vulcan on the stick that you fly it with. Um, sort of down uh, on the back of the stick, it's got a sort of a button that you hold and that activates the nose wheel steering. So when you're taking off, I think when you pass 70 knots or so, you move your hand up the stick, which disconnects the nose wheel steering. And at that point, the rudder is provides enough sort of steering to not need the nose wheel. And uh, yeah, you can take off using the rudder. You always impress me with just how much you know about the Vulcan aircraft. What <laughs> what got you into the Vulcan? What why the Vulcan? Why is this your aircraft of choice? Um, I so I think I actually I'd I'd seen a Vulcan before I actually was obsessed with it. Um, I think it was oh that, the first time I remember seeing a Vulcan anyway was I think it was uh, summer twenty nineteen. Um. And I was at Norwich Aviation Museum, and I think it was either the day before or the day after I'd been in an extra 200 stunt plane, and that was very fun. Um, and yeah, I, I went in the Vulcan; it was really cool. And I and I I was quite interested, and and I didn't know the significance that it'd done the longest bombing raid in history, and and it was such an old aircraft. Like, I didn't realise it was from the early 50s, um, and all the and like all the incredible stuff involved in its lifetime. Um, and I remember, I think, when I saw that there was this charity called um, Vulcan to the Sky, I thought, wow, I can't wait to see this fly. But I realised that it actually last flew in 2015 and it would never fly again. Um, and I was kind of sad. So anyway, I put down my phone or whatever for that day. And then I sort of um, noticed that there were a couple of other Vulcans that um was still able to taxi um and those two being xl426 at south end airport which is the one that we've supported um and then there's xm655 at wellersbourne uh, airfield and that is just as cool and i think i'll probably try and support that one as well um and that actually has the olympus 301 engines uh, which doesn't actually produce a howl sound but more of a raw sound um, so, yeah, and I think they actually, back in the day, the RAF had to limit the um, the power of the 301 engines because they were too powerful. Um, I don't know if they are still limited now. Um, when you say too powerful, how do you mean? As in, it I, I think tear the aircraft handled, apart? Or? Well, I think it's just because uh, the 201s, which make the HAL, which XO 46 and XH-558 have, the one, and XH-558 being the one that last flew, um, they were slightly less powerful, obviously, than the 301s, and it would just sort of handle completely differently, having the 301s at their full power, I believe. Um, I'm not actually sure the, the exact reason, so I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, I know they were limited. Um, I think they were unlimited in the Falklands raids. I can't remember exactly, though. Um, but anyway... I don't know why I brought that up. It's not the most interesting. Thing no, that's really, yeah, no, yeah. Just the amount you know about the Vulcan is pretty intense. Is there any other craft you like similar amounts? Obviously not as much as the Vulcan, but you know have similar interest in, say, I don't know, maybe the Victor. Or... Oh yeah. So I think um, I think any I think I'm definitely a historic aircraft, like uh, all historic air. I definitely like still obviously modern aircraft. Like I probably you know know more about than the average person like I keep up with it all the time and stuff but I think what I find I think there's something about old aircraft the fact that it's quite hard to find good footage of it and you know it's never gonna happen again it's just so fascinating just looking back at it and trying to uncover more stuff um, so probably you know obviously Spitfire, Hurricane, Lancaster uh, I do like all, pretty much all of Avro's aircraft so um, I do I, I, not only Vulcan but just um, in all the all of the sort of historic British aircraft, really, made by you know Avro, Supermarine, Hawker, those sorts of ones like Harrier, 
Um, and I do quite like the short sand and flying boat as well. I found that one really interesting because it's just this massive four engine flying boat. Um, and also the princess flying boat, which was absolutely huge, but unfortunately uh, none of them survived because they were all scraps. Well, they have um, noticed. All the aircraft you've mentioned are British in nationality. What's it about yeah. British aircraft that you appreciate more than, you know, well, say may, um, more than American, maybe, or you know, Russian or? To be honest, I just think I can't really think of any American aircraft that I just find. I'm, I'm just, I, 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 it's like I just so happen to. It just so happens. It's not because they're British. It just, yeah. it's, it's nothing to do with that. I just actually can't think of any. Amer oh, obviously, seven four seven actually. That one maybe, even though it's not modern. Um, that's right. Even though it's not that old. I mean, it is pretty old, but that one does definitely have a place on my list of favourite aircraft. Um, but I think most of them are just. It's it's the handmadeness of them, the creativity, um, and just how how like different they look to the aircraft nowadays sort of thing because you know obviously back in the day Britain was the um, the aircraft manufacturer that everyone went to sort of thing yeah uh, and now it's now it's European Airbus and you know American Boeing um, but you know they're all so similar they're just well apart from military jets but air airliner wise they're all just you know two engines fleet fuse large wings engines yeah um, not that interesting, in it, my opinion. The reason I ask is because when you're talking about the um, the flying boat, sorry, what's the name of it again? Uh, Short Sunderland. Yeah, the Short Sunderland. When you're talking about that, the kind of the H4 Hercules, the Hughes Spruce Goose, jumped to mind. Oh, oh yes, and the oh, the Grumman Goose as well. Uh, and that reminds me. Uh, the reason I like the Grumman Goose is is it is because it reminds me of a mini Short Sunderland. I remember flying that in Microsoft <laughs> Flight Simulator X. Um, I think it's so cool because there are actually still a few that are flying today. And if I was to own like a plane, I, that would definitely be one of the ones I might like to own, sort of thing. It's got retractable gear and everything like that. Um, some, some with more powerful engines and things like that. And uh, it just, it's such a nice little aircraft. Yeah. What about the PBY Catalina? That's my personal favourite of like all the flying boats. Oh uh, yeah. So actually, I think I have a video. Of, I remember seeing that at Duxford Air Show. Um, Kathleen, and I re I like that as well. And the reason I like it is because when I saw it take off, its takeoff speed was so low. Um, and I know that the Catalina and the Sunderland were both used um, in World War Two by the RAF um, for some coastal commands, I believe. Um, and I think, oh yeah, because I'm following them. I know they had to recently ditch in Loch Ness, I believe. Really? Uh, oh wow, Catalina. Yeah, uh, but luckily they started a fundraiser and they are uh, out successfully and they're back at Duxford, I think. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a very cool aircraft. I think the Sunderland is definitely cooler in my opinion. It's, you know, four <laughs> engines and yeah, yeah. pretty massive. Um, last one, probably, I think the last flight was in the 90s uh, when it moved to so, a museum in America. Um, and, yeah, I think it's it's just something about this massive thing that, that lands on water. It just it doesn't look like any other aircraft. It's it's a unique aircraft. Yeah, definitely. The sh um, the H4 Hercules is always my favourite when looking at flying boats. Mm -hmm. That just does not look like it should be able to fly. Period. It's, <laughs> I think. That's, oh yeah, no, yeah, no. That that is uh, pretty incredible, isn't it? <laughs> it's still got one of the longest wingspans I think of any aircraft. Um, yeah. It's probably in the top three, at least. I'm not completely up to date. Mm. 1947, yeah. And speaking of old, um, you know, talking about history and looking at old aviation, you collect RAF films, don't you? I do. Uh, as of probably... I mean, I've always... I think I've had... Um, I remember a few months ago, I was there was this uh, film called Delta 83, and it's a film from 1960. It's about half an hour long. And it's basically a really cool film just showing it's quite a short insight into sort of crew training for the V Force, uh, for the Vulcans. Um and yeah, unfortunately it's 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 you know, still under some copyright protection. Uh, so it's not online anywhere. And you, if you want to get it you have to find it in a DVD or elsewhere. And um I remember there was this there were two DVDs which had it. There was the Royal Air Force Unseen Films. That had it. I bought it. It arrived. 
but it was quite low quality. So as a chance, I decided I'd go for the other DVD that had it, which is the, the Royal Air Force Definitive Collection in the 60s. Uh, and there, it was nowhere to be seen online. Um, uh, it was literally nowhere. I looked every site, I asked for help and everything like that, and it was nowhere. But then one day, it was on Amazon. Someone had just, an, an old owner had put it on Amazon. So, it, so I bought it. And uh, yeah, it arrived, and I just loved seeing all the footage of Vulcans scrambling and everything. Very rare footage, you know, anti-flash white paint. Um, and there's so I got that. And since then, I'm just looking at my DVD pile. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 um, sort of DVD sets. Some of them have multiple discs. And I think I now have 173 uh, films in total. Uh, from all of those DVDs, and God damn. I just love—I just love having, being able to just look at all of these old films and just—I I honestly wish I'd sort of grown up in the '60s and been able to join the RAF then, because it was so cool. If you watch a, a film looking into the insight of what they got up to, it was just incredible. Um, and the aircraft they flew were just so different, and yeah. So, how many films do you say you owned? Um, well, I think some of them are duplicates because some of the DVDs have. Uh, I think it's. I think it was 170. God damn, you um, own probably quite a lot of history then, right there. Yeah, so it goes from the 50s to and to the um, 90s, but mainly the 60s, uh, and a couple from the 70s. I think yeah, the 70s. I'm also pretty much as interested in is that's when the Vulcans are in their really really cool roles of like reconnaissance, and it was really secret and everything like that. It was really cool. Um, yeah, and sort of the camo. I really don't know. I haven't decided whether I prefer the anti-flash or the camo yet. Uh, <laughs> they, they both look really cool in different situations. You know, high altitude above the clouds, the white looks incredible. But yeah, but low level, which is what it was designed for, the camo just looks so cool. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, you own... What do you plan to do with all those films? Because that is a significant amount of history you've got well, yeah around. so uh, I, I imagine a fair a few of them will have some sort of copyright protection but yeah. I, I, what firstly I want to do is just extract all of the cool like aircraft like the Vol well I mean all of the aircraft were cool back then but particularly the Vulcan and the Victor and the Valiant ones like that I just want to make a compilation of all of the really cool shots um, and then if I'm able to like because you know there are limited quantities of these maybe like I don't. I really don't know if I will be able to. But it'd be cool if I could like make a website where people could like watch them because I'm fairly sure some of the really old ones because they're already on YouTube. You know, some people have uploaded some of them on YouTube. Uh, the ones which haven't yet been uploaded. See if I can do something like that and let everyone else experience what it was like back then. That would be so cool. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. No, I really hope you do that. <laughs> yeah. I'd I'd like to be able to do that. Yeah. Um. Well, how about... Uh, here's something to talk about. Your channel's icon... Yeah. It's Dave, right? Yeah. What's his name? That's my cat, yeah. When do we get to meet him properly? Um, <laughs> well, I do have one video of him. Um, I'll send it to you. I think it's the one but... with the Piper Cub, isn't it? Oh, yeah, there there is the Piper Cub one as well. Yeah, because he is iconic, and yet we have never yeah. had a proper chance to meet him. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know if he... How is he? He's hiding. Yeah, oh, I think he, he might be upstairs now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we actually bought him a toy for Christmas. It's like a enclosure where a mouse keeps popping out and he has to try and catch it. Um, yeah, very nice. Um, some ra Rarely brings in any animals um, for us to, you know, like dead mice. Aww. Which is good. How old is he? Um, I think, I can't remember how old he is. I think he's, I think he's like five, Aww. four or something. Yeah. Fair enough. That's really sweet. Mm. Well, I've covered all my topics now. Nice <laughs> saying. <laughs> um, is if you unless you want to talk about anything else. Um. No, I think well, yeah, we covered a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's a really good talk. Well, Sam, thank you so much for talking to me. No problem. Oh. Yes, it's been a good conversation. I've really enjoyed it, man. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you so much for being on the show, and goodbye. <laughs>